So for chapter 16, we're going to start looking at aromatic compounds. And we've looked at them before to some degree, right? These, these aromatic compounds, like right, we've mentioned, talked about benzene before, uh, but we're going to go into some more things about it, right? These benzene rings, aromatic groups in general, have not seemed very reactive, but we're going to look at some cases now where we can do something with aromatic compounds. And in particular, kind of like we've been doing, we're going to start off the chapter with some more nomenclature, right? Some more naming examples. Um, and down below are some common names for these uh, aromatic groups here, right? We all know benzene already and some other compounds we can, you know, shorthand in terms of giving them abbreviated names is naphthalene with these two benzene rings fused together. Toluene is another shorthand name for when we have a methyl group, right? Kind of like a methyl benzene. Um, anthracene is when we have three of these aromatic groups fused together like this. Um, and we can kind of build these out longer and longer too, these aromatic groups to get polyaromatic hydrocarbons, right? These long aromatic chains here. Um, but we're gonna look at some actual naming examples for benzene as well. So we kind of discussed this a little bit, if you remember our conversations from uh, chapter 10 with phenols, right? All the same naming rules essentially apply. Um, where for these naming rules for benzene, we have benzene as the root, and then right, we name substituents that are attached to the benzene ring, right? With all our previous naming rules still applying such as right, numbering substituents to have the overall lowest number be possible. Um, we can use, like we mentioned before with phenols, we can use ortho, meta, or pair discussions, right, when we're talking about substituents. As instead of using one, two, we can use ortho, and so on and so on for the rest of these uh, positions here. Um, with the kind of the, the new piece here that we're gonna be discussing a little bit, and we'll see this in examples we do during class, if we have an alkyl chain longer than six carbons attached, then the arene ring, which of course by that we mean right the aromatic ring, these terms are sort of interchangeable, um, it's no longer the root and we use phenyl for the aromatic substituent. So for example, I'm gonna draw the example down below here. Um, if we had this benzene ring and we had an ethyl group attached to it like this, of course benzene is our longest chain here and we would simply call this ethyl benzene. We can put one ethyl benzene, that's fine, but it's sort of implied, right, there's not really a one or two here on a benzene ring, there's only one substituent, but either way it's fine. Um, another example would be the following, we have a benzene ring, and if we have a really long carbon chain, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? The seven alkyl chain is bigger than benzene, which is only, uh, right, six carbons. So this name would be 2-phenyl heptane, right? Heptane being our alkyl chain here, and then at the two position, we have a phenyl group, right, which is what this whole business here is. And one little caveat to that is if there's an extra CH2, like we see here, we would say that's a benzyl substituent, okay? So with these rules in mind, right, we're gonna go ahead and do some more naming problems um, in class, starting with, uh, in particular, all of these. So we'll go ahead and start off uh, class by looking at some more of these uh, examples and naming them.